What's up guys, welcome to today's video. So I just finished editing this thing, doing the voiceover, and I'm really excited to share this haircut with you guys. This is one that um, I've been really like, just wanting to know myself for a long time, is how to create those kind of like curved hard lines. So I've been working on it and uh, I'm ready to share it with you guys. So I uh, hope you guys like this technique. Hope you can use it in the salon. Hope it opens your uh, mind to just different ways of creating um, different hairlines within the haircut. So uh, really excited, super excited for you guys to see it. So let's just get started with the video. Here we go. What's up guys? Welcome to today's video. On the video today, we're going to focus on a short to long bob. Not only is the outer perimeter line going to be short to long, but also the interior layering is going to be short to long as well as we cut concave layering to add some kind of light movement to this haircut. So the sectioning is pretty simple. We're going to keep it uh, symmetrical, um, going right down the center and then going from the apex or the high point of the head down to directly over in the middle of the ear. Uh, that's going to section off the front. Then we're going to go into the back, drawing a vertical parting down and going across the occipital bone and a slight diagonal forward, really just mimicking the jawline. Uh, so that's going to be the sectioning to start off the haircut. So you'll notice that I kind of comb the hair over uh, towards the face and then I slide that clip up underneath. The great thing about sectioning that way is it just allows the hair to be combed in the direction I'm going to be combing it as I work up the head shape. So it just gets my workflow moving a lot faster. So I don't want to talk about um, degrees of elevation as I'm working in this haircut. And the reason I don't want to do that is because I'm working on a round surface. So it's almost impossible to dictate exactly what the angle is. What I want to say is that I'm, I'm creating kind of a medium elevation, which is going to give me a slight graduation in the haircut. Um, everything is being brought back to the previous, so it's a traveling guide in the back. And the cool thing about this cut is we're pushing a little bit of extra weight behind the ear, and then we're gonna use that to create this really cool kind of solid outline or defined line that curves right behind the ear, which I really love that shape. So um, I think that's the highlight of this cut. So notice um, also each section that I'm taking is slightly more diagonal, almost moving into horizontal by the last section. So also notice on my very last panel that I'm taking is I drop my elevation. Even though my finger angle stays the same, my elevation drops and it just adds that extra bit of weight uh, behind the ear where a lot of people will start to round that corner and then they'll end up with a hole or just a less dense area. Um, I want to keep that density there so that I can use it in my outline later. So change that happens on the right side. Uh, this is something that I think is super important because body position changes throughout haircuts. So understanding that on your left side, your fingers are pointing up in the air. And then on the right side, your fingers are pointing down. And the reason for that, in my mind, is that I'm always combing that new hair to the guideline. So as I take my guide um, and I'm working on the right side, I'm pushing that new hair into the previous section. And then the same thing was happening on the left side. Uh, with my finger pointing up, I was scooping the hair and pulling it into that uh, guideline as I took each new section. So just notice also I changed my finger positioning on the scissor. And that's just because at this point, when I get to that corner of the head, I, uh, if I try to hold the scissor normal or how I would normally hold it, um, I struggle to get my hand positioning in there. So when I shift my hand, uh, especially on those first couple sections, that's just allowing me to kind of get um, my hand out of the way so that I can get a clean cut and I'm not pulling the hair somewhere where I don't even want it so that my hand positioning fits there. So you can see that graduation starting to build up nice even feel. I'll always go through and check it. So now I comb down um, that section and I cut it in half. So now I'm working at about the mid crown area. So the key thing here is just to make sure that you're aware that the head is starting to curve up, right? So um, you want to that's going to dictate the elevation that you're um, 
you're creating now. So my elevation is now going into low elevation, not because my angle is changing or my finger angle is changing, but because the head shape is moving uh, and cur curving away. So it shifts that angle to more of you, what you could call a 45 degree angle. So still bringing everything back to the previous, working my way over to behind the ear. So you can see that shape starting to build up. Now, this is where people look at that and they're like, oh, I see a hole. And that's what freaks hairdressers out because we're kind of taught that. Um, that's not a hole. We haven't cut the perimeter line yet. So when you go through and you do cut the perimeter line, then you're going to um, create whatever line you want. So you're either going to, in this case, we're going to utilize that, um, that hole a little bit, that whole area or um, you could connect everything together and have a nice solid blunt line as well um, to finish out your shape. So you have many options and I don't want people to get freaked out because they see that, that, um, that what we call a hole is happening when it's not really a hole. So finger position stays um, the same as we did before. So I was pointing up as I worked onto the left side and now I'm pointing down as I'm working across the right side. And you can see that shape is really starting to flow with the jawline, which is what we want in the haircut because we're trying to enhance that. So now I comb down the entire top of the haircut and um, I'm going to saturate that down again. And then we're going to work our concave layering from this point, which is going to create disconnection on the bottom. But that's great because it's going to create a nice light disconnection uh, because we're cutting these concave layers. So we're collapsing the shape a bit. And then as it works through onto the sides of the haircut, it brings less density down. So then when I blow it dry, I can cut my more blunt line and I'm not cutting through as much hair. So the way that this is going to work is it's I bring down that whole section. I'm pivoting off of that high point of the head and I'm over directing it right to that center back. So it's stationary guide. It's really going to push that weight forward, but check that density right down behind the ear. So before it was really thick, uh, but because we're cutting this concave layering into it, um, that's starting to lay down. It's taking out some of that bulk. So it's just a nice light feel to the hair as it falls over. Disconnections are fun for me, I think, because it's giving you hair into a place where you can kind of play with it and, and do different things and create different shapes. So it's not always about cutting everything off before it falls. It's about cut, pushing weight where you want it so that you can do something with it later. So here's the last bit. You can see I'm over directing everything back to that center back and cutting it. It's going to be a very extreme length in the front. Uh, I'm going to mimic that exact same process on the right hand side now. So now I'm going to go in and style using the Paul Mitchell Invisible Wear Volume Whip. Uh, great thing about this product, super lightweight, medium hold. I'm just trying to smooth out the hair to get that um, polish on it and get it as 
not straight, but what I want it to do is flow with the head shape. And then I'm gonna go in and do my dry cutting. So uh, I'm using the Paul Mitchell Pro Tools blow dryer um, and I'm just leafing and, and doing a flat wrap technique to really bring in the head shape. Um, anytime you're gonna do dry hair cutting, especially on a bob, um, the key thing is just to have flexibility at the base uh, of the hair. So really working that hair back and forth. I see a lot of people blow dry and they blow dry a part into the hair and then you can never get that part out. So just make sure that you're constantly passing the hair back and forth, lifting it to give it a little bit of volume. And then when you go in with your iron, um, we use the head shape as a guide and I just follow the head shape with that iron. So now we're gonna do our detail work. This is where it gets really fun, guys. So um, you can see that this isn't really um, much of a cut at this point. So now I go through and what I wanna do is just start to create that point and create the curve in my hairline. So all of that uh, over direction that we did at the very beginning pushes the weight down into this point. And when you have weight, you can get a really nice solid line. So you can see I'm just using the tip of the scissor. The other thing I want you guys to notice, and I didn't cut much out of this uh, technique because I'm constantly refining that line over and over again, uh, where some people don't even show that part of the haircut, but there's so much work that goes into uh, really refining and, and getting this line the way that you want it. So I didn't wanna cut much of that out at all because I want you to see the process. So notice that I kind of just start to get some bulk out and then I go a little bit deeper into it and I just keep working that curve until it starts to look exactly the way that I want it. Now I've got that curve going and I'm go through and do a little bit of point cutting because we did that, um, the concave layering, it does build up a little bit of weight. You can see that high, that heavy point into it. So I don't want that point to go away because I cut it on purpose, but what I wanted to do is just lighten it up a bit. So a little bit of deep point cutting takes care of that. Now I'm gonna use my comb as a guideline. Um, notice that my comb is pretty much parallel with the jawline at this point. That's what I wanna start creating. Uh, the first pass is getting the bulk out of there, so it might not mimic the jawline perfectly. Then once I get that bulk out of there, then I start really defining that line. So you can see, um, still using the tip of the scissor, going through over and over again, just really um, getting that line exactly the way that I want it. So you can see, it's starting to mimic the jawline there. So then I take another um, slight horizontal, uh, slight diagonal forward, I guess you could say, uh, parting, and again, following the jawline on that as well, and just working that line over and over again, using the, um, the underneath as my guide. One thing that you won't really see me doing on this is sometimes I'll take a section of hair and I'll use the um, smoothing iron and I'll go over it just because as I'm clipping it away, sometimes it bends the hair a little bit. So, okay, I did show you. So, um, so I go over it with the iron, just smooth the hair out and then I can continue uh, cutting my shape. Scooping the hair up, no elevation here, just holding it in the comb to get a nice defined line. We'll get that last little bit. Now I'm connecting the whole thing together. So you can see that line really coming to life. So I probably spent about 15 minutes total on all the dry cutting uh, for this haircut. So you could definitely see that I sped it up and everything, but notice how much I'm really cutting into that. I did the same thing on the opposite side. And then at the very end, I like to do a little bit of a pass with the blow dryer just to get all the loose hairs out and also just kind of form the hair to the head shape. And this is our end result. Hope you guys like it. Hope you can use it in the salon. Hopefully it's a haircut that you've been wanting to learn for a long time. And now uh, you have a better understanding of what it's all about. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you have any comments below and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.